And let's bring you more now on that developing political situation in Mozambique, as well as the successful elections in Madagascar. Dr. Alfredo Jirumo Hengari is joining us. Uh, he's a researcher at the South African Institute of International Affairs, and he's also the head of the Foreign Policy and African Drivers Program at the Institute. He joins us live from Johannesburg. Thank you very much, Dr. Hengari, for joining us. Now, first, let's take a look at Mozambique here. Now, almost 20 years after a peace deal was signed in Mozambique, trouble seems to be brewing. What could be contributing this? Uh, well, I think uh, the, uh, the situation in Mozambique is becoming quite dire and also very worrying, especially after uh, uh, the country has seen a, a, a period of stability and calm with very impressive levels of economic growth and the prospects for uh, democratic consolidation is also becoming much better over the past few years. So I think it's quite worrying that uh, the country is now to the brink of, uh, of another war that, is, that can, can potentially tear apart the fabric of that country. Well, Mozambique was, uh, had very good economic prospects for the coming years. So can war be averted, though, given the fact that uh, Mozambique has gone through about 16 years of civil war? Can that war be averted? Uh, excuse me, I can't hear you. Can you please uh, repeat the question? Can the war be averted, though, in Mozambique? Yeah, th the potential for another war is, is quite real. I mean, it, uh, uh, the, uh, the tension started last year when uh, Alfonso Dlakama and his Renamo party retreated from uh, the mainstream constitutional political scene by going to uh, the central parts of the country where what Renamo has got strong support. And uh, in recent weeks, uh, we have seen uh, uh, sporadic clashes between uh, 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 Renamo and, uh, and supporters of Relimo, including government forces, I think. Uh, what we saw last week was essentially a tipping point when uh, the, the government forces attacked the base of, uh, of, of, of Renamo in the process killing uh, an MP and it appears as if uh, Renamo has vowed revenge. It's also important to underscore the fact that uh, Renam Renamo has indicated that uh, its leader, Alfonso Dlakama, is no longer in control of, uh, of, of what uh, uh, some of its, uh, of its members can do. So to a certain degree, uh, you are looking at also a a movement that, that is quite uh, dispersed for the country and uh, without any central command when it comes to uh, 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 what uh, its, uh, its members can potentially do. All right. Let's move away for the moment from Mozambique and uh, look at the developments in Madagascar, the good news coming out of the Madagascar elections. They have been praised by the African Union and SADC as free and fair after years of political bickering. Could this be Madagascar's return to political stability finally? Well, I think uh, the prospects for, for stability are real. But it's also important to note that uh, the, uh, the final test will come on the 20th of September when uh, uh, the second round of the presidential election is likely to take place. Uh, it's, it, 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 it still remains to be seen whether uh, the loser will accept uh, the verdict of the people or whether uh, uh, accusations of uh, vote ringing are likely to take place. But for, from what we have seen so far, uh, the news coming out of that, of that country is quite encouraging. The, uh, the election uh, uh, having been declared uh, as free and fair by the Southern African Development Com Community Observer Mission there, as well as the European Union having declared that uh, the elections were calm, peaceful, and, f and, and, and free, with only uh, very isolated incidences of, uh, of, uh, of, of violence, but would that would not have any uh, uh, bearing or impact on the overall outcome of the first round of the election. All right, the news coming out of Madagascar is very encouraging indeed, but why did it take though so long for the parties in Madagascar to reach an amicable solution such as this one? Well, I think it's also imp it's important to, uh, to know that uh, whenever there's a conflict, uh, resolution at times can take very long. Uh, the result might appear to be very easy but uh, the grievances uh, could be also very deep-seated. So I think it's, uh, that explains why it took so long. It always takes long to resolve uh, conflicts uh, that, that, uh, that are quite uh, deep-seated, that cuts across uh, ethnic cleavages, and also at times uh, grievances uh, when it comes to issues of governance. So I think uh, basically that's what you had in Madagascar over the past few years. You had a situation uh, where uh, um, there, was a lot of, uh, uh, there were a lot of differences over the, uh, 
the, uh, the, the, the nature of the legislative elections as well as uh, the presidential elections, who are the candidates that should run, should uh, the former presidents run, should the current president run. Those are those were the issues that are not very easy to, 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 to resolve. So it would, uh, it would ordinarily take a lot of time to resolve those. So when the, the, when the final result comes out, it appears to be, to be easy, but uh, I think it was a very, di very difficult political process that had to be managed. All right, Dr. Hirimo Kangari joining us there live from Johannesburg. Thank you.